So most of, of the device or processing class, they start with an introduction where they tell you, you know, about Moore's law, about scaling, or you know, device scaling, bit scaling, so on. I did not want it to do that in this class, so I want to give you a different kind of introduction, more more current with, uh, um, more in touch with the recent uh, current affairs. So. So what, what, what is nano manufacturing, right? So nano manufacturing is these set of processes such as patterning things, etching things on a nano scale, depositing things on a nano scale, you know, making gate stack, making uh, interconnects, making planarization, and this enables us to you know make things like this, making a microprocessor, making a DRAM. Uh, making a NAND flash chip. So this is the first part of this course where we'll be, first we'll be understanding these techniques and then applying them to make, to understand to how they're devices. used and what's, what's specific about the process flow in each of these, making each of these devices. Uh, the second part of the course actually looks into applying the same set of techniques but uh, applying it into a different set of applications. So we want to keep the same processing techniques, but now open them to a new spectrum of application, like making a display, or making solar cells, or making LEDs. And, uh, and you'll, you'll realize that although the basics are the same, the essence is the same, uh, this, the perspective in which this technology is used is completely changed. For example, if you're, uh, if you're making solar cells, and you talk to that person about doing patterning, he'll, he'll look at you like if you're from Mars, because nobody in solar uses patterning or lithography. It's, it's just too expensive. If you do it, you know, solar cells currently cost 80 cents a watt, solar panels. Each lithography steps will cost 30 cents a watt, so nobody, nobody does lithography in, in solar. Similarly, if, if you talk to tool manufacturers who make tools for making solars, versus making tools for, for, uh, for those DRAM or microprocessor. The throughput of these tools is completely different. So tool makers, they always want to sell tools which make as less, which process as less wafers as possible because they can sell more tools of it, right? So for microprocessor, you sell tools which process 20 to 30 wafers an hour. A lithography tool which costs $100 million uh, processes uh, 100 wafers per hour. A solar tool processes 1,000 wafers an hour. So it's an order of magnitude difference. Uh, but we'll try to bring some commonality to this and see how, how we can um, apply the same set of principles into this new field. <coughs> what this course is not is, is is nano manufacturing meaning making things nano machines or making things on a nano scale, uh, or making miniatures of things which are miniature models of things? Uh, although it's a very interesting field, we will not be covering this in this class. So if if you had any misconceptions, I will clarify it at the very beginning. <coughs> so let's let's give let me give you you know a more motivation for this class, right? So. So it's a very famous quote. Actually, it's not a quote by Andy Grove, but it, it was a quote which was made famous by Andy Grove because he used to talk to this many times. Like you might have heard that this quote which Steve Jobs used to give that computers are bicycles for mine. It was not his quote. It was somebody else's quote. It was a, a scientific American quote, but he made it more popular. And you see a lot of quotes like that. They are not. You encounter people who. Uh, who tell you something and then it suddenly sticks with you and you want to you want to carry it forward in your life, right? So he 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 gave the score, you know, that to for any company to grow or any you know to for you to be successful in your career, you need to place yourself where the battles are happening, right? So let's see where the battles are happening in semiconductor industry, right? So let's let's see what happened over the summer, right? So this is fall starting. Let's see what happened over the summer, right? 
So th this is the, probably the biggest battle happening in semiconductor. People don't think it's a semiconductor industry battle, but it really is, and I'll, I'll show you why it is so. So this was, you know, Apple wins, Samsung pays them a billion dollars. It happened right here in San Jose. Uh, I took a leave from my day job to go there to watch the case because, <laughs> and anybody can go and watch the case because you just need to show your driver license and you can get in and watch the case. And I was not the only one. There are people from Google, people from Intel. Why would they be sitting, right? But it, it, and and I'll I'll point why this is relevant to the semiconductor industry, right? Let's see some more battles which are happening, right? So. Intel versus ARM, right? It used to be Intel versus AMD, but it's it's the new battle frontier, Intel versus ARM. Uh, Intel can't get into ARM's territory. ARM is already penetrating into servers, so I don't know. So which would be the winner, we'll try to decide towards the end of the course. Another, another thing happened over the summer, right? Intel. Uh, used to deny for a long time that PCs will continue. They used to state for a long time PCs will continue to grow. They finally admitted over the summer that uh, China, even the growth that they were getting from China has stopped. They revised their outlook to our revenue to fall over this year. So the PC market is finally ending, right? Uh, another thing happened over the summer. U.S. slapped tariffs on solar panels being made in China, and not a small traffic, not a small tariff, 31%, right? And that too retroactive. That means all the previous panels that were bought from China, you have to pay taxes on them now, right? So, in fact, U.S. firms complain uh, that you know we want panels from China because, and we don't want to pay taxes, especially on stuff we bought already four years back. So another another big battle. All these stories are either from Wall Street Journal or New York Times uh, or Washington Post. Those are the three main newspapers that you have in this country, right? Uh, another big battle happening last weekend, right? Uh, Apple released iPhone 5. Immediately, two hours after that, Samsung released the ad. <laughs> saying, you know, the next big thing is already here. And so, so let's take some of the specs. Is, is it really better? Which, which one is better, right? We, uh, so this is, they actually, you know, release some hardware specs, some software specs. Software specs is kind of funny because they just live, list their software specs in none of the uh, iOS apps. But <laughs> But anyway, let's let's look at what's in the hardware, right? So, Retina Display versus AMO LED. AMO LED stands for Active Matrix uh, LEDs. We'll Active Matrix Organic LEDs. We'll understand what it means in the lecture on display. But which which one is better? So, from the resolution wise, uh, so the first thing they claim is the screen size is bigger here, and they also claim that. Uh, they have a full HD. So full HD is 720p. It's 1280 by 720p. Uh, iPhone 5 is not full HD. It's 640p. By the way, the videos for this class are full HD, and you can <laughs> you can watch them in full HD. Sometimes YouTube uh, it auto detects your connection and it gives you the resolution which is best for for your network speed. So if you don't get full HD, there's a, there's a button over there and you can click, it makes it full HD. <clears throat> but what Apple came was they have a 16 to 9, 16 to 9 aspect ratio. That is, if you divide the number of pixels uh, width to health, it's 16 to 9, right? Uh, uh, and that is better if you're walking, if you're watching uh, uh, movies, especially uh, the movies that you watch in theater, are 16 to 9 aspect ratio. So it's it's better for that. I don't know how many people watch movies on their phones, but anyway, um, up to 20, 220. So I, Samsung claims they have better standby time, also a better talk time, 
And Yibo is formulating a problem where he'll make you calculate all these talk times depending upon the battery life, but battery capacity. But uh, it's primarily, it, and it is true too, uh, a large part of it because Samsung has a bigger screen that allows you to fit a bigger battery also. So if they have a bigger battery, it allows you for longer talk time, longer standby time. Um, more RAM. Uh, doesn't necessarily mean too much, but we will discuss that later also. So these are some of some of the biggest battles happening over the summer. <clears throat> how how does it affect our life, right? People who work in devices, process technology, semiconductor, right? How does the post PC era change life for them, right? So so let's first look whether you know. Let's really make sure that the post PC era is here or not. Uh, this this is a graph from CEO of my company. Uh, he it shows uh, 2007 iPhone launched sold six million units in its first entire year. iPhone five launched over the weekend. How many did it sell over the weekend? Any five, five million over a weekend rather than over a year. So that's how much 450 times the growth, right? Total number of smartphone shipments, currently there are around 350 million. People expect them to go to a billion in 2014. So that's one sixth of the world's population buying smartphone every year, and possibly true too. <clears throat> right? So this is a slide I stole from the CEO of Arm. He he. I mean, he loves to talk about the post PC era too, right? <laughs> so he talks about how the computing evolved. Earlier, it used to be just hobbyist. Uh, PC, the first application which really drove it was desktop publishing. Then the application which drove it was Excel and Microsoft. But they dominate up till 2007, right? What what happened after 2007, right? So this is what happened after 2007 iPhone launches, not really a big dramatic shift, but looks what starts happening in 2008, 2009, right? Uh, the market share of, of these post-PC devices is now approaching, approaching what PCs has, right? 2011. <clears throat> Same story happening here. Uh, Android much more successful than the iPhone. Again, this is number of shipments, right? So look at this number, 2012, around 250 million shipments of iPhone and Android devices combined. Does anybody know how many PCs you sell, laptops, and desktops combined per year? Anybody wants to take a guess? Oh, you are really uninformed, so this is really good. <laughs> I can teach you anything. <laughs> uh, it's around 350 million uh, worldwide PCs, and and PCs meaning both laptops and desktop per year, right? So it's already approaching that. Uh, tablets, even uh, much more, much more, uh, much more rapid growth than even the iPhone and the iPad. Uh, 70 million tablets sold this year. Right. Is, is, are there going to be things beyond you know these uh, touch-based devices? Uh, probably yet. Right. The next big thing, not Kim Kardashian, but you know what she's wearing. Uh, it's the Google Glass. So that I mean, there might be a new form factor just around the corner. Uh, but so why why am I talking about this, right? What, what is this doing to the semiconductor ecosystem, right? Who's the, who's the biggest buyer of semiconductor chips um, in 2012, right? No no surprises here. Apple, 2012, 28 billion. Uh, if you know a chip industry, it's roughly a 300 billion dollar industry. 10 percent, roughly 10 percent of that is 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 purchased by Apple, right? Uh, the next player is Apple's competitor, right? So they own another 5% of it. 
you'll see that, you know, and I'll show this later, all, all the PC dev companies where they are going and where the tablet companies or the post PC companies are going. Right? So so they have a huge influence on the entire entire semiconductor industry now, right? So let's let's see how they are influencing Silicon Valley, right? So we all live here. Um, you go to school here, probably a lot of you will end up settling here, right? So Silicon Valley is is a you know awesome place to live. Uh, uh, it's also a very evolving place. It keeps on changing. So to uh, to uh, to make it clear to you, I have uh, these maps. There's this company called SiliconMaps.com, and it releases these maps of Silicon Valley every year. And these are hugely out of proportion, but <laughs> but they list all the company. Whoever pays them money, they list their logo on this map. And <laughs> and uh, so it's it's a good way to actually see how the valley has evolved over over you know from a PC era to a post PC era. So we have a I have an exercise for you. You need to uh, form a team of two. Probably you know set. Uh, Say hello to the person sitting next to you. Uh, just introduce yourself to him. And what you need to do is you need to write down name of uh, 20 semiconductor companies uh, in the Silicon Valley. Uh, this can include fabless companies. It can include equipment manufacturers. It could include solar. It could include uh, uh, LED and semiconductor services. Uh, you get brownie points if you can name the street and the city also. All right. So, 